We're coming up on show 468, the Model Y is seen, the MG ZS EV, and the right-hand drive Model 3s are on their way. Those stories and many more coming up on today's show. That is show 468, uh, Saturday 11th of May edition. Hopefully you're having a lovely weekend. If you are listening to this show as we publish, when we always uh, put this show out um, at the the weekend, and uh, if you are listening to us, over the weekend, hopefully you're having a lovely time, whatever you are doing. Enjoying some good weather here at the moment. Actually, it was in the mid-twenties, according, at least according to the car display. I, I sort of trust that one. Whatever you're doing, hopefully you're having fun and enjoying yourself. Oh, a quick thank you, by the way, to everyone on Patreon. And tomorrow we will, as always, give you a full name check if you're a Patreon supporter, exec producer and above level. And also we've got some new names to mention tomorrow and... Uh, thank you very much to myev.com for helping support this show. Wonderful resource in the USA. And uh, no, no matter where you live, uh, whether you are looking to buy or sell an EV anywhere across the country, check out myev.com. So the Model Y has been spotted. And this is really interesting because when some car makers put their cars out there for testing, they are covered in camouflage panels, special paint. Tesla don't really have that way of operating. We know the, the semi-trucks are out there at the moment doing their thing. We know the Model Y has been revealed. And you know what the Model Y looks like. And now the Model Y has hit the road. And ChargePoint took to Twitter to post some photos. Well, just one photo, really, of the Model Y. They said the ChargePoint have made an unprecedented find out in the wild. The Tesla Model Y on public roads. Now, the captured photo, which was then posted to Twitter, shows the rear of the SUV, of course, based on the Model 3, and with that styling, which is going to be very, very popular for those that want the SUV style. Entering the market in 2020, potentially it could be the best-selling Tesla ever made. It's promising to see Tesla already advanced stages, not just using the Model Y for the event where they unveiled it to do test drives under controlled conditions of course but now out in the wild on public roads and was being followed by a camera car the camera car being a model s by the way looks like they were testing the model y on the public charge point network just as you would do you want to want to run it around all the different charging networks and monitor how it behaves and things like that so more good news for those who have a an interest in the Model Y. Maybe you've got an interest in a truck, though, and maybe Workhorse are a company that you'll be looking at. Autoblog have been looking at Workhorse. General Motors is negotiating the sale of its shuttered factory in Lordstown, Ohio, uh, to the company that builds electric trucks. They are, of course, Workhorse. The company confirmed earlier this week it's in talks with the Cincinnati-based Workhorse Group to sell the huge facility and also announced plans to invest $700 million in three Ohio factories to create 450 additional jobs. Now, the potential sale was first announced on Twitter by Donald Trump, which is a bit weird, uh, could preserve some jobs on the uh, sprawling plant, which is 60 miles east of Cleveland. It also dashes any hope that GM could reopen the factory where, until March, it had been building cars for more than five decades. GM at pains to say, despite what Donald Trump has been tweeting, that it's not a done deal, but they are working on it. And things did go slightly crazy when the tweet was put out, says Jalopnik. The workhorse brand, those making electric trucks, is, although it's not a settled deal, did make people look at workhorse and ask, really, well, what is workhorse all about? Jalopnik not massively impressed with the truck that they are making to go up against uh, the Rivian, the Tesla trucks and more. Compared to other trucks, the design and engineering of the W15 Feels clunky and crude, says Jalopnik. The styling is amateurish and the specs are not impressive. The electric motors make 450 horsepower, 0 to 60 time of 5.5 seconds. The range is 80 miles. Of course, it does come with a range extender. I would jump in and add here. Workhorse, say Jalopnik, is also in the running in partnership with VT Hackney to produce the next generation of USPS mail trucks. Uh, perhaps the plant is an, a purchase in anticipation of getting the deal to make trucks for the U.S. Postal Service and pure electric trucks as well. 
I'll pop a link, link to Autoblog and Jalopnik, those two sites in the show notes below if you want to have a look. Good news for those looking forward to the right-hand drive Tesla Model 3 with two weeks since uh, opening started on the design studio of the Model 3. And I think some of the heat which was around that day a couple of weeks ago when it went live around pricing, people have now taken stock, taken a couple of breaths, looked at why the pricing is where it is. People thought it was going to be cheaper than the cars are on sale for and more reasonable comments i see on twitter now of people going actually you know what that probably is about fair it's it's expensive we have taxes to add you've got to ship the car from fremont california all the way to europe or other things as well so uh, you know it's, it's probably about right when you look at the prices Tesla have registered the first batch of Model 3 VIN numbers for right-hand drive markets, and the UK is the first on the list for the right-hand drive, say, inside EVs. With the latest batch of Model 3 VINs, 442 of them include 70%, which are all-wheel drive, 70% international, and uh, 64% are right-hand drive of those two combinations. About 283 of these VINs are for right-hand drive. So maybe one of those 283 cars which are being registered in the first batch could be yours if you are listening and you have ordered one. Well, the first deliveries are expected later this month. Sorry, no, it's, it's what we're in. We're in May now. So yeah, no, it will be next month, actually, in June. The configurator, the design studio still says June. I had a look at it yesterday. And once again, I, you know, I went back into it. I had a little play around. I looked at some numbers, didn't do anything about it because it's still very, very expensive. If you've got one ordered, though, wow, I bet you cannot wait. Delivery start next month. Obviously, at least four digits in in the initial period, we believe, as the car is getting positive reviews, say, uh, inside EVs. Four digits, they mean as in how many will be delivered in the very first batch of VINs. I think demand seems strong. There's no way of knowing. It still says, expect your car in June. I thought that might have slipped, a bit like when you try and order an iPhone on the day it's out, and if you're not not quick, it then goes, you know, delivery, you know, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. So I thought that might slip. It still says, at least when I looked yesterday, uh, the design studio, I could get a model, I could order a Model 3, Now, my weapon of choice, by the way, would be the long-range version, not standard range plus. I would go in the middle. I would go in the middle, actually. And that is shy of £50,000 here in the UK, which, you know, unless I find some money down the back of the sofa, I'm probably being a little bit too sensible for my own good, but still done nothing about it. Let's talk about if you need to move lots of people at once. And Mercedes-Benz have got an idea for that. Electrically, of course, as this is an EV podcast, the EQV. Now, we know the very first car coming is the SUV, the EQC. Pretty sure the EQA, EQB, all those things are on the way. The EQV is the van. Shortly after the world premiere at the Geneva Motor Show, the EQV van completed its first urban journey in the port of Barcelona. The concept has been shown off with the electric future for premium MPVs being just around the corner. The vehicle's aimed at families. It's aimed at sports enthusiasts, people who want to do shuttle bus services, who've got to move people and their luggage long distances with electric power, and that's what the EQV is all about. But you decide whether this range is going to be enough for you. The Mercedes-Benz EQV, when it arrives, will have a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. It'll do 250 miles of range, that's 400 kilometers, has a 150 kilowatt electric motor, front wheel drive only. Fast charging is going to be very important to the EQ range from Mercedes. So they say it's going to be charging at around 62 miles in 15 minutes on a DC fast charger, so... Maybe that's 250 miles an hour. Not the quickest, which is one of the comments I've seen about Mercedes-Benz cars in the EQ range. Not class-leading in terms of charging faster than, say, an Audi e-tron, but I don't know if I'm so worried about that. Uh, Obviously, if you're using it as a working vehicle, then speed and range is everything. Top speed of 100 miles an hour. I'll pop a link to Inside EVs in the show notes if you want to see more. Look, I just think it looks like a really nice, stylish, contemporary people mover. And now we know it's got a big old battery underneath, and you can shift lots of people on clean, green electric power. 
Over the last couple of weeks, I have seen more and more people here in the UK talking about a car which is going to come in very much under budget, if you are talking about comparing it to things like the VW ID3 and the Model 3. This is an MG. Mini recap, MG, very famous British car brand, sold to the Chinese, who are now the guardians of that logo and that name, so it's not really the company that it it once was, but the company is still going. MG announced the European debut of its first all-electric model. It's called the MG ZS EV, and it is uh, going to be shown at the London Motor Show, which is next week, 16th to the 19th of May, at London's Excel Centre. Well, the electric ZS is going to enter the market in autumn, and since March, actually, the MG has had almost 800 expressions of interest, they confirmed today. But I couldn't find out how many people have actually put money down on one. And it's a car that many people here who I know in the EV world are super interested in and actually some of them have put money down and have got their name on the list already for this it is the most of any pre-launch model in mg's history in fact they say uh, to insideevs.com the company intends to open the order books officially at the london motor show and it'll begin sales on september the 1st later this year pricing and specs all tbc we know it's going to be a well, I, I I need to be careful with cheap because that's a that's a, a very subjective term, and everyone is working with different budgets. But in the world of EVs, it will be priced competitively because yes, you're not buying a luxury German name, you're not buying Tesla, which are it's, many would argue leading the way with battery technology and their software and self driving and things like that. You are buying the Chinese MG. And maybe the quality won't be tip top. Maybe the latest tech won't be the best. The pictures I've seen and the there's some YouTube videos out there in Chinese. The ones I've seen has analog dials. Is that the end of the world? Of course it's not. So, you know, you get what you pay for, and this looks like you could get a lot of EV for not a lot of money kind of tempted myself. And finally we'll end with Polestar, Volvo's Polestar. They've picked Britain for a new R&D centre, totally ignoring what's going on with the political world and Brexit. The Swedish luxury electric car maker Polestar, which is jointly owned by Volvo and the Chinese parent company Geely, is setting up an R&D centre in Britain to develop the future passenger cars it's going to be making. It said on Wednesday to Autoblog, the move comes as Britain's impending exit from the European Union has somewhat dented UK car manufacturing, prompting several car manufacturers to cut production and warn that it was because of Brexit that they were cutting back jobs and deterring suppliers and EU workers. Whereas Polestar, whose cars are known for their signature Polestar gold seatbelts, said there was no special considerations really around Brexit in making their decision as the move was more about tapping into engineering expertise in the UK. Initially, they'll have 60 engineers in Britain and expanding its team over the rest of the year. Yeah, a good example of something like that is Formula One, where nearly all of the Formula One teams, all but two, really, that would be the Italian teams, as in Ferrari and Toro Rosso, that would be all of them are based in or have a significant presence in a very concentrated area of the UK and even a team like Haas, the American team, Haas, yes, have a UK base. And yes, the French team, Renault, Yes, they're based in somewhere called Enstone. So, actually, this is a a very interesting place for automotive talent and engineering talent and all those kind of things. So, Polestar saying, look, Britain's the place where we want to be in developing our new cars. And what gorgeous cars they are as well. I think their styling is just about my favourite in the EV world. Polestar 1 is a very interesting car, but Polestar 2, which is the Model 3 and the competitor, the ID3 competitor, now that is going to be looking very interesting. Hey, you got one day left to get in for question of the week this week, and I would love to get your name on the air tomorrow reading out your answer to this. Should EVs celebrate or hide their technology and their technological roots as well? Well, you can let me know by emailing me hello at evnewsdaily.com. Use the comment section of Facebook and Twitter and uh, YouTube if you want to. 
Right, time for the ending bit. There are 212 odd patrons of this show. Thank you very much for keeping us going. Full list, like I say, on Sunday's show. I'll give you a big mention and say thank you very much. As for the previous shows, 467 of those. If you'd like to download any of them, you can get them first and free and automatically. The new ones by hitting subscribe. And if you want to leave a little review, well, that would be amazing if you get time on iTunes. Come and say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I will catch you tomorrow for Question of the Week. And in the meantime, remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.